and welcome tonight everyone to the um, Baylor Women's Council how to assemble a charcuterie board party so excited you're here there are over 200 of us um, signed up and logging in at this moment so I'm so excited for you to be here um, I'm with the Waco chapter of the Baylor Women's Council but I, we have um, friends from all over the United States with us tonight. So welcome. Um, I'm going to start us with a word of prayer, and then I'm going to um, introduce um, our girls that are here tonight. We are in for a huge treat, and I know this is going to be very exciting for everybody, and I hope you're prepared and, and ready. But um, if you're not, just keep working, and um, it's going to be a lot of fun just hanging out and doing this together. So let me open this in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just thank you so much for this night. I thank you that um, through crazy times, God, there are ways for us to come together and be with um, Baylor friends and family that we wouldn't even normally get to see um, or hear from or even know that are here. But God, just knowing that um, we are sharing this evening with um, Baylor people from all over the country and um, those who graduate from Baylor or just love Baylor, um, God, it's pretty special, and I thank you for Baylor University, Now, thank you for what it's meant to us in our lives, and um, God, just um, put your hand on it, bless it, and God, I just pray for your blessing on each person here tonight. I pray for your blessing on their family. I pray that you keep them safe and well, and um, God, just lead us and guide us, God, in, in all that we do, and God, just um, thank you for loving us. Thank you for forgiving us. It's in your holy name we pray, amen. All right, so we're going to get started. Um, let me tell you first, if you have questions tonight, if you will go to your chat button down below, um, you can um, put your question in on that. And I'll, if it's something that we need to ask as we go along, I will text that over to um, the right person and they will answer it. It'll probably be um, one of the girls who are working tonight and um, they'll answer the questions. Otherwise, we'll save questions until the very end so that we can keep working and get everything done. So let me start out. I want to introduce to you Marianne Hill. She is the queen of this group of three generation women and um, she is a 1963 Baylor grad. She um, and her husband, Doug, lived in Dallas for 48 years. They just recently, in the last five years, moved back to Waco. Um, she's been very involved while she was in Dallas. She was very involved in the Baylor Women's Council there. She served as president and in many leadership positions. She's also very involved in the Louise Harrington School of Nursing and is on this task force for their Gold for the Gold, Go for the Gold Gala that has um, raised so much money for the school. Um, she has two daughters who you're going to meet tonight, and I'm sure there are so many people on here who already know Sherry, Amy, Marianne, and Allie, so it, it requires very little introduction, but um, they are so much fun. They're just a great, if anybody knows to how, know how to throw a party, these three, these four, including Allie, who is now coming up the ropes, know how to throw a party. Marianne is the glue that holds them all together. They have a wonderful, beautiful family. And it's going to be a lot of fun tonight. So um, I just want to introduce Marianne and I'll let you introduce the girls and we'll get started. Thanks, everybody. Yeah, you do. I think they did good. Yeah, talk, Mom. Yeah. Right, now you have to. We're ready. Go. Hey, everybody. <laughs> can you see me? <laughs> we, know, we know we're a little lopsided because we're trying to have our board so you can see us and the board. But we are so happy that you are with us this evening and we're just so excited to be doing this. We want you all to know up front that we do not claim to be experts. We just are doing something that we have learned to enjoy doing with our family and our friends. And I want to introduce to you all, uh, this is my daughter Sherry Vickery. And Come back over here, Amy. We lost our cameraman because of the ice today. So we're trying to do double duty here. And we're this, not good at taking We're winging. Here. And this is Amy <laughs> Chapman. And a, and a little bit later, you're going to meet Allie Small. That is Sherry's daughter and my granddaughter, who is a better grad but now lives in Dallas. And she's going to show us a working girl board a little bit later on. So we're going to start this evening by showing you a finished board and give you an idea of where we're going before we get started with actually creating this board. But the one we're gonna show you is gonna be, we're gonna create something similar. 
So uh, Amy's got the camera now and she's gonna actually show you that board. So you can see we've got all kinds of, of different goodies, but all this board is made from all of the things that were on your grocery list. So you have everything to make this board and we're gonna do it with you step by step because we know when you first look at them, they look a little bit intimidating, but really it's just a step-by-step -step process. So here we go. The first thing you need to do is make sure you have all of your ingredients spread out in front of you so that you can get to them when it's time. We've got ours all spread out here and uh, we're gonna all work together. So thank you for joining us and we're gonna have a really good time. The idea of a charcuterie board now is a super trendy up and coming thing that we've been doing probably four or five years. And they have even since the beginning of that, they have morphed over the years to, some, to things that are super, super fun and can go with holidays or go with events. They can be all sweet, they can be savory. But I remember the first time I ever saw one and I thought I could never do that. That's like way out of my league, no way I could ever do it. But just like mom said, once you kind of do it step by step, then it's, it's not daunting at all. So we promise by the time that we get through, you're gonna know how to do this. Or if this is your gazillion charcuterie board to make, we hope that by the time we're through, you'll have one or two little new nuggets that you can take with you for you your Give us some tips, we hope. And for those of you that are my age, we used to call these cheese boards, <laughs> but, but they're kind of fancy. They're, they're a lot fancy. more than cheese They're now. a fancy up cheese board is really what it is. So let's get going. Okay, girls. let's go. Okay. Okay, so um, what you need, kind of need to do first, first of all, there is no way for to make a perfect charcuterie board. The perfect charcuterie board is the one that you make for your people that has things that your people love, your crowds love, that is a way that you can show love to them. You so can't make a mistake. That's not a mistake. mistake. But to start out, um, it's just kind of good to have your cheeses where they want to go. That's where we kind of want to start. Those are your anchors. You can spread your soft cheeses, your hard cheeses, different shapes all around the board. So that's what we're going to do first. Then we're going to take our little bowls. So if you have some little bowls around, get those ready too, because those are great for anchors as well. So we're going to have a bowl. You can use a cup or whatever you have. Whatever you have. Jar, whatever will go on there. Yes. Okay. So we are, I'm going to grab our, one of our, um, this is a, this is a brie. So grab it. If you have a brie or another soft cheese or a circle cheese, it does not matter what it is. So I'm just going to open ours. So if you've got your brie, I think our list of five different cheeses. Yeah, five different so cheeses. It doesn't matter. Yes. Whatever kind you like. That's, that's what matters. But this one is one that you're going to keep pretty much intact. Yes, yeah. Is what we chose to do. You can do whatever you want to. And y'all, we are, we're going to be looking at this one and copying that one. So you're going to get the exact finished product as what we showed you earlier. So I'm going to put it exactly where it is over on this other one. I'm sure you cut a little, and I did. Cut, I cut a little piece out uh, just so it, it would be, it's, people would know they were supposed to cut it. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. That's I, right. poked, I poked my mom. I, I think, I don't think you made me a mortal one. You know what? We need a trash can. Okay, so all I'm doing right now is I'm taking that brie or your soft cheese, whatever it is, if you have a circle, and I'm just making a little, I'm cutting out a little triangle, okay? So cut out just a little triangle and then pull it away from the other part. Okay. 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 So I can still kind of, okay. And, and then we have a wonderful hot bit. cheese. And turn that one around. That's a favorite of one of my grandsons. So we try to always include this because Matthew likes it so much. So we're going to um, gonna we're, cut this one in two and kind of put it in two different spots. And our hands have been washed, by the way. Okay. So, so I don't um, know about y'all, but I always kind of like to have a hot cheese. Uh, one that has a fruit in it, one that has herbs in it, just a variety. Mm -hmm. So I'm kind of spreading out the color. I've got the orange over here and the orange mm -hmm. back over here as well. Okay, and this is um, a, che a white cheese, and we're going to cube this one. So we're just going to take it out. It comes in a rind. So pick another cheese that you can cube. Any of them that you picked is fine. I'm just going to take the rind off and then cube this one. 
Or you might have already bought some, you might have bought some cube cheese and that works too. You yeah. don't have to cube it yourself. That's a good life hack. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, a, that's a good this. savings of time. And if you didn't want to cube it, you could put it in, you know, strips. Uh, you could leave it in, you know, instead of cubes, do a different shape, do a rectangle or whatever. And while she's doing that, our fourth, I mean, our fifth cheese, our fourth one, I guess, is one, it's, it's a softer cheese. It's a goat cheese that's all uh, been coated in cranberries. And so we're going to put this one. Where does this one go, Sherry? It goes right over here. We have some right here. All hidden. And we need to cut a couple of little pieces of it so you can see the pretty white inside. Okay, where do my cube? I'm going to mm -hmm. cut that. Here right here. Right so away. This one doesn't go in here. Right? This oh, one's not ready to cut. Okay, go. So this one's going here, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. That one goes here. And then the white one goes over there somewhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we drew it. Yeah. And as far as those, these ones that are rolled, you can find um, those in the specialty um, deli section of your grocery store. Um, some of them have, I think there's like a blueberry, vanilla, there's apricot ones. This one's cranberry. So, it's yeah. really pretty to use like at Christmas time also. They have them at most stores. It's just in the deli section instead of with your regular cheese. Well, in fact, that's the case with most of the, the, the fun cheeses you'll find in the deli section of your stores, in specialty stores and specialty uh, cheese uh, places. They have lots of, of different kinds of cheeses and some that are really pretty. We, we found we wanted to buy them all because uh, <laughs> that, some of them were so it's hard pretty. to stock. Yeah. Okay, and I'm mounting this cheese, but I don't think I'm going to use all of it. So I'm going to kind of keep some back just in case we need the room because I'm looking over there what else we have. So, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, and then I'm going to cut okay, a couple slices of the, that, yeah. um, and this is goat cheese. We, not, not everybody likes that, but my family really likes it. Mm -hmm. Well, and sometimes when you cut it, it kind of uh, marbles inside. I don't know if you can, you can tell but it kind of makes it look really pretty when it, it's cut on your, and appears on your board that the cranberry goes down in there. Okay, I'm gonna turn it this way. Yeah, I'll turn it that way. Okay. And I'm just gonna kind of cut a few pieces. And if you're having a party where you, uh, or people yeah, over is, and there's a lot of people, you probably wanna do more individual servings rather than putting a knife and everybody touching everything. I yeah, think, but yeah, definitely, especially. We're kind of doing it just the pretty, pretty way right And here's our, here's our fifth cheese, and we chose just, just to cut it into slices, but again, you can put the whole block if yeah, you want to. Yeah, it's like that, but you can mm -hmm. put a little yeah. cheese knife and people can cut their own, but we were just trying to show you guys some different ways that you can present it. So this one is kind of going down um, toward a little bit towards your cranberry on the That's side right. of your, and I know I didn't give you time to, to cut this, so I'm gonna give you time now, but we'll, we'll keep talking. The Hill Girls have no trouble talking, so we'll just kill some time here. Sherry, I think you ought to tell them what you said about what us all working together today. What well, like. here's the thing. Hopefully, you know, you, you may be by yourself tonight, or you might be with some sweet friends or whatever, but when you're with your mom and your sister and you're sitting here trying to create these, these things and you go, oh, that looks good like that. Oh, I like that. Y'all like that? And then they say, no, it doesn't. That looks terrible. We got to move that. So hopefully you're with people tonight that are encouraging. I'm just teasing. We, we had a blast. We had a good time. We had okay. fun. We've got a couple of questions. Let's hear it. Okay. How many total ingredients, how many total ingredients do you use for this particular board display? Oh, you know what? Let me go look at my list because I can tell you exactly. Okay. Great question. Um, Great question. That is a good question. But you know what? It doesn't really matter. You can use whatever you have in your refrigerator. I mean, honestly, my daughter made one the other day and she was so proud of it because it had apples and grapes and Cheeto puffs. And she had made a little <laughs> See, I love that. And That's she great. thought she was so cute. That's perfect for the college girl. Yeah. Okay, now see, you don't worry about stuff like this either. I don't know if you can see that, but the, like some of that cranberry is on there, but we're gonna cover that way up. So don't worry about You're that. You're not gonna have any surface of your board gonna that, have really nice that's gonna show. Y'all, there are gonna be 20 different ingredients in this. In, in, th in this board, 20 different things. And some of them we've used more than once. We've, we've spread them out and used them in, in different ways, but we started out with 20 different ingredients. So hopefully that'll give you some idea. And, it, and if you 
if you did register for the event, there's a shopping list that went with it. And those are the things that we are using. Those 20 things, yeah, that it's that five meats, uh, some fruits, some veggies, some, uh, uh, some five cheeses, and then uh, some miscellaneous things like almonds and olives and fig jam. And you know that jam could be anything, but it's it's twenty different ingredients in this particular board. Y'all are good at questions. We've got some good questions. Uh -huh. Okay, so one question is, how do you suggest transporting, putting in a temperature controlled area for an already <laughs> made board when going to a party? Okay, well today, tell, tell the story of today. Today we had you're going to see a big board in a minute, but. We had this board and we said, what do we do with it? And we put it outside because it's so cold today. So that worked for us. Covered it and put it outside. Covered it and put it outside. But I think you just have to wrap, wrap it things tightly in saran wrap and then try to lay it in a flat place in your car and don't hit any bumps. <laughs> <laughs> or, or the other thing you can do is, um, and there's another board I'll show you in a minute that um, I did for my daughter's graduation party, but I actually took all of the stuff and assembled it once I got there. I had some, I had it all chopped and kind of like, kind of like this where, can y'all see that? I don't know if you can see it. But she had a little downtime to do that before her party. I got there again. and just put it together when I got there. Yeah. So those would be my suggestions. And if we didn't answer your question, ask it again. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Moving okay. On. Yeah. Moving on. Okay. So then the next thing that we do is put any bowls that we know we're going to use for dips or honey or anything like that. Jam, Jam whatever. With the All big, of those. The preserves, whatever. whatever. I mentioned that. Okay. Sure. Here's the thing. Okay. So in a little bit, um, Sweet Alley Girl is going to show y'all how to make this amazing hot honey dip. So that's for this right here. And I, you can buy these um, cute little honey dippers. Um, you can order them online or find them, them at little stores. Um, so that's going to go there. Give some away in a little bit. There's so, going to be prizes. So, yeah, we've got some prizes for okay. you. <laughs> okay, and this is a fig spread. It just looks pretty. And this one, we're not going to put it in a jar because it's already in a really cute little jar. It has a cute little jar. You'll see that. It's cute. So we're just going to put it on here with a cute little dipper. Mm -hmm. Where's the dipper? I'll go get it. Okay. I'll go get it. I'll get this. Okay. Okay. Uh, and we're going to put some of that on top of the brie. Yeah, right. Yes, we're going to put a little bit of this on top of the brie. Okay, just to just kind of a little, um, just to get your jam yeah. where just, it looks like somebody's used it. Yeah, and, it, it just looks like it's a and and make it a little pretty. interesting. Looks kind of pretty. Mm -hmm. And then we've got Sherry. We got a little. Um, yeah, we've got some rosemary. Little rosemary right somewhere mm -hmm. over here. Okay. That we're going to we'll put on that. Put we'll that, do that. In put that on in a minute. Okay. All right, then the other thing we need, we're gonna do um, a little thing of olives right here. And that's gonna go right there. I can't touch olives. Let me go. And we have some, um, we olives. have some, uh, I'm with you, Chica. Some green and kind of reddish, dark red olives. And uh, you can use whatever kind you have, or if you don't like olives, you can use something else. Totally. And but, then over here, we're gonna put um, some, okay. like on, I guess your, are that's we that corner. Yeah. We're gonna yeah. put Take some yeah. peppers that we're gonna chop up here in a little bit. Yeah. Doing slices here in a little bit. So that's gonna go. Um, it's just. Oh a, well, here I, I you can see the size, but oh, we got to tell them to slice the peppers. Right? We will. Okay, so we're putting the olives in. Putting the olives, and we're doing two different kinds of olives in the same, um, the same bowl, and it uh, you know, it look, just looks kind of pretty, and it gives you different colors in there. Um, let's put a few more of these, a few more of these, and then we're kind of stir them up. And so, I think you can, aren't there olives that, I don't care for olives, but aren't there ones that have like garlic and mm -hmm. Yes, and, and stuff some of them are them. bigger. We just kind of went with standard olives, but you can use big fancy olives. You'd just be surprised what you find in the stores uh, when you uh, start to start to look for that kind of thing. Okay, do you have any other little container that we need to put on here? We do not. I think, I think we're through with our containers. And these are just great because it helps you anchor meats and um, veggies and things like that. So this, this is how we start, is with cheeses and any kind of bowls or jars that you're going to use. Get your meat out, however you want to do it. And we cut the pepperonis were already um, sliced. sliced. The salamis were already sliced. The um, sausage... We did it kind of at an angle. On the diagonal. Yeah, on the diagonal, thank mm -hmm. you. 
and just um, a little different shape yeah that's all okay so we put some of our salamis down here at the bottom of the board summer sausage oh this is summer sausage you're right takes a village <laughs> we help we help our each other our family uh, we're not, okay there you go okay and then we're going to stack some up right back here kind of and you can Let use show the good thing about the little um containers that you use you can stack things up on them they kind of give you some good little ways to stack them up so it just kind of kind of folds for you you're basically stacking making a pile of it yeah you're just it's just a pile just like that and kind of turn each one uh -huh. separate so uh -huh. someone won't get the whole pile right you like that. i got it i think okay and everybody loves this. Another good thing to do with this prosciutto, you mm -hmm. could also have, um, we didn't include this on your list, but you could also include little um, little stalks of uh, fresh asparagus and people can wrap um, their asparagus with the prosciutto or you could already have that done. That's just another um, variation you could do. Start going on. And okay. All right. So we're going to put this, some of this one that we've done in the little, um, that's the jalapeno sausage. Yeah, this is the jalapeno sausage. And we've cut those in the little, um, the uh, kind of the diagonal. And we're gonna just kind of stack those up right here along the front of this. In board. the front. Yeah, oh, and there's some of the rinds coming off. But we yeah. just think it's kind of fun to, to spread out the meat so that you see the color of the meat all around your board. But you don't have to, you can group it all together if you want to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so let's see. We've got okay. some more meats that we've got to go somewhere, okay? Where does um, okay? You want to show them how to fold the salami? Yes, let me share. show you how to fold the salami. Yeah, show that. So okay, start. so these thinner ones, your thinner ones, some of them have pepper on them, some of them don't. You can make, um, yeah, that's good. Okay, so you kind of just fold it in half and then fold it in half again. Okay, so there's what I did. You're going to kind of, it kind of looks like a little flower. So you fold it in half and then fold it in half again. And then this is what we're talking about. You can have little things to anchor. So I did it in between the brie and the cheese first. Yes, I think. I'm going to kind of start right here and I'm going to use this little jar. So see why your jars come in handy because you use them to, and you can move all your stuff around to make it work for you. And then you can also, you can do it one at a time or you can do a bunch. Like I'm just going to stack them all up like this. That's a little, that's another little hack. Just, I'm just adding on and adding on and adding on. And then when you have a sous chef like your mother, it goes faster. <laughs> and you can like earlier, I think on our board over there, we did like two of the redder ones and then two of the pink ones. And we, But you don't have to, you can okay. do them any, any so old way. I'm going to take this and I'm just going to, I'm just going to stuff it right there. And we also have some in between some the things around. Sherry, in between the brie and the yeah. white cheese. Here you go. Okay. This one, the other place we had that yeah i think we did and that's just such a cute little um variety of the meats that you can do so that they're not all just flat or looking the same that's what makes you look extra when you take this to the party they think you're extra <laughs> and you kind of are but... ali's gonna make fun of me that i use that word <laughs> i can hear it now okay that we're good on that Okay. So, let me, okay. so where does the rest of this go? Oh, I think we had some, we had some right here, but the olives. Yeah. We had this right here in front of the olives. We have questions. I'm thinking we have questions. Let's see. We have some. Let's see. Okay. Let's, let's kind of, let's kind of take a check in with the camera over the board right now. Okay. Yeah. Kind of where we are. You'd like me to do this. Here yes. we go. Thank All right. How, how are we looking? There we go. Okay, there we go. How are y'all doing? Everybody doing good? <laughs> see? Yeah, we're just going to put some of these right here, and then you can just see kind of what, spread it out. Kind of what we're doing. Okay, y'all. Now uh, we're going to go to Allie in Dallas. This is Allie Small, and she just graduated not this past year, but in 2019, 2019 from Baylor. And uh, she's a working girl in Dallas. And so she's gonna show us how to make 
a really fun yeah, dip that we're sure. going to include in our uh, board. Hi, Allie. So, hi, Allie. Hello. Okay, I'm making a dip that's out of this book. Um, you can get this, I'm sure, anywhere. Um, but it, it's like, it's super awesome. They have like the uh, different things for like a dip to go or like how to make a dip or like different breads, how to like sort your cheese and all that kind of stuff. Um, but this is a super simple recipe. It's literally five ingredients. Um, so first things first, it asks for a half a cup of mayonnaise. So I need to tip this down, I guess. <laughs> okay, so first we'll do the half a cup of mayonnaise and that noise is disgusting. <laughs> Okay, so I'll put that in first. And then it is two tablespoons of Dijon mustard. And this one's the best because like you literally can buy this stuff anywhere. So you don't have to go to like any certain store to buy any of these ingredients. Um, okay, so next thing is gonna be, the only specialty item actually is gonna be this Mike's Hot Honey. Um, they have it at like any specialty store, um, but it's something uh, super simple um, that you can buy. And it's actually two tablespoons of Dijon mustard, not just one of the mustard. Okay, and then the hot honey, so you're gonna do two tablespoons of that as well. Um, it's basically just honey with like chilies in it, so it makes it a little bit spicy, but not anything that is too spicy for anybody. And then uh, last two items are just gonna be lemon juice and salt. So lemon juice, you just do a tablespoon of that. Um, and then you'll basically just do salt to whatever you wanna do, like however salty you want it to be. And then grab a whisk. And it's a super like jelly kind of like dipish situation. And then for this, I basically just add like a dash of salt and then kind of like as I go, if I want more then I can put more if I want to. Um, but I basically just mix it in this bowl and then I can add the bowl just to any part of my board and just kind of move anything over if I need to. Um, but on my boards, I'll put like peppers or anything like that, that I can dip it into. Put it back on my face. Uh, but basically it's just going to be like a super, not super runny, but I don't know how to describe that texture. Yeah. Not super thick, but <laughs> like just kind of like a, a thin dippy texture. Yeah. Consistency. And then So that's super easy, literally took under, what, a minute or two minutes. Um, and then basically, like I said, you'll add it onto your board anywhere and then you're done. We did our dip this afternoon, we cheated. So we're gonna put it in the little bowl and get it ready to go. Yes, okay, so here's, we made it this afternoon and I'm gonna put it in um, this little wooden bowl that we have kind of at the back of your board. And I, I, we did not tell you to get these, and that's great, but you can pick these up um, or order them online or whatever. But a little spoon works fine, Yeah, too. a little spoon works fine, too, but the little honey dipper is fun. So if you're not making it with us, you can see the kind of the consistency. It just pours like that. So what do we want to do next? Well, you know what we're doing next? Everybody oh, loves a prize. Everybody loves a prize. So we're going to do a prize now. We've got um, everybody that was registered and everybody that's online. So... Um, one of the women's council members has drawn names for us. So I've got the list of who they've drawn. 
So I'm going to read out right now. Amy, you want to read out? Oh, yeah, I'm two right now. Drum on, two. Drum on. Okay, we are going to give a prize to Deborah Burleson. Thank you, Deborah, for joining us. And Sharon Cook. Yay, Sharon. Okay, and so the prizes are little honey dippers and a couple of little spreaders and a couple of wooden spoons. So I'll get those mailed to you guys next week. We're so happy you joined us tonight. So more prizes to come. Okay, yay. Yay. Okay. Okay, so, so those two people want two of the little honey things. Yes, they yes. want two okay. honey things. Two, two honey things. Honey. Okay. Okay, so now we've got the basic things on our board. And now we're going to start putting the color. We've got the 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 meat part, the, the, the hearty part, and now we're going to add the fluff. Okay, so, let's okay. go. All righty. So, while uh, they're getting veggies ready, I'm going to show you. I just got some, you can just pick up some little rosemary sprigs at the store, and I'm just going to put, lay this kind of across there with the jam. Okay. For some color. And we had three different colors of, of bell pepper, um, green, orange, uh, yellow, oh, red. Yep. Actually, we had Four. No, three, right? Yeah. We four. have four. I think we have a little we have four. Maybe. So we cut some of them. And like I said, we already did this because we've done our boards, but we cut some in strips and then we left some in circles. So you could do either one. We use both on this board. And you may only have gotten one color and that's fine too. But totally if you fine. have more than one color, you can so, incorporate them in various places. So right now you want to cut your bell pepper into strips or circles or both. It's up to you. It really, we can, you can do whatever you want to. All right, then I'm going to go ahead and tell you, we're going to use some cucumber and there are a couple of ways to make your cucumber look a little fancy, um, that, but it's not fancy. And one of those ways is that you start off by cutting a little strip down all four sides off of your cucumber. And then when you cut it, it interrupts the solid of the skin of the cucumber and it just makes green. a little design. Uh-huh. Kind of looks like that. Yeah. You can kind of see it's off. Oh, now, wow. another thing that you can do to your cucumber and it makes it look a little bit scored is go around and in about five or six places, cut. I, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing, but cut about a quarter of an inch into your cucumber and do it in about four or five or six places. And that will make it look like it has a little bit of kind of a, a design on the outside edge. Yeah, I just gonna do that. Don't know if you can see that or not, but it just gives it a little bit of interest. But if you're in a hurry, just cut your cucumber and use it any way you want to. <laughs> and you can cut your cucumber in rounds, or you could cut it julienne if you wanted to. Doesn't matter what whatever is best for you. But since we had cut strips of the um, the peppers, we did our cucumbers round. So uh, take a few minutes to cut your peppers uh, and your cucumbers. And why don't we do two more prizes? Yeah, while let's while do you're two cutting. more prizes. While you're cutting, we're going to do two more prizes. Sure. Oh, two more prizes. I'm sorry, I was reading your great questions, but I'll do two more prizes. And then prizes. we'll answer some questions too. Okay, so let's see on for prizes. Okay, the next... Number three and number four, you guys are gonna win these two little spreaders. We've got little spreaders. <laughs> and that is Sarah Hensey and Pat Powers. So congratulations, you've got okay. spreaders coming your way. Okay, what about a question? Let's do yeah, a question. 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 Okay, sure got the question? question. This is why y'all are cutting. For cheese with a rind, do you cut it off or do you leave it on to look pretty? These people are gifted because we're <laughs> gonna talk about that later. So, but um, to answer your question about that right now, you can do whatever you want. Um, we have some that we're gonna we'll show you later that we've cut the rind out and or cut the cheese out of the rind, left the rind intact. And then we kind of piled, we cut the cheese into cubes and piled it in there. But if it's like a cheese like this and you're just putting it on your board, I think you can leave the back rind on no problem. Well, and it we does have look one pretty. in there that we're gonna show you a little bit later uh, that we just left the whole rind on. It looked pretty and, and so we just liked it and you could slice the cheese around it. And so we just left it there. Right? Yes. So it's up to you is the answer. And, mm -hmm. the, and then the second part of that question is how do you decide what cheeses to slice ahead and what cheeses the guests will cut themselves? 
it's literally up to you. I mean, right. I mean, y'all, we just guessed today and you know, some of them we thought, oh, this one would look, and we tried to do a variety. We I, tried think to it, like, yeah. I think it also has to do with how many people are, are coming. Like somebody asked, how many does that serve you? The one you're making, how many will that serve? It will easily serve 12 people for a little Maybe appetizer. even 15, depending on what, what yes, I mean, you have. What I, you I, have. I was at a, a Valentine packing party the other night and she had a board, but she had all of her cheeses individual because it was a lot of people because, and we were coming in COVID, you know, so she had that already cut. So I think it's really up to you. And sometimes the cheese looks prettier whole than it does. And we just or, tried to do it. So, so we had some sliced, some whole, uh, some a little bit sliced so you could see what it was. So okay. I think it just depends on the cheese you have. If you have one that's not very pretty, cut it up. Okay, if let's you go. have one that's pretty, leave it. What I'm doing now is I'm going to get a variety of um, bell peppers in my hand and then I'm going to put them all in this cute jar and I'm going to stand them up. So I'm just using a variety of colors. Um, do we put bell peppers anywhere else? That's what they're going to look like when they're finished. I don't think we put bell peppers anywhere else. So you can use all your um, tall bell peppers, all your uh, here's, here's out of order. Yeah, we did the round ones over round here. Round ones over here. So. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll so, get those and I'll put these back over here. So we, I'm going to start putting cucumbers. So just put these in as many as it will fit, you know, kind of separate them so their colors are different or you can put all, that one doesn't work very well. So the colors are uh, how you like them. Doesn't matter. It's up to you. And you know, that'd be cute too at Christmas if you, just to do red and green if you wanted to, or in fall, you could switch it and just do yellow and, and orange and, and red, take out the green. And then we, we kind of took the three of our little circles and put them back here and kind of made a little container out of them and then- Stacked them on top we, of each other. Then we took some red grapes and just kind of put right on top of those and added yet another oh, one. No, we had one more little thing of grapes, and I think we had one more. Little. It's just a lot of layering, and say, "Oh, I can just add that on top of that, and that'll make it." Oh, yeah. <laughs> make it. Uh -oh. Listen, your grapes. Do we have grapes on my rug now? But that's okay. 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 Uh, let's see. We have got. Yeah, let, let's go with the rest Start of our cucumbers, cucumbers. and okay. our and. Okay, and I'm sure for snack peas. I'm not in the greatest cam uh, camera angle, but that's okay. All right, so I've got about four cucumber slices and I'm just spreading them out like this. And I'm gonna put those right beside this cheese that we have that way and just stack them up in front of the sausage. And again, you're kind of, you're kind of placing green and green you know, away from each other for this one. Or there may be other boards that you decide to put all your green together. We just decided to kind of okay, share the colors. You out. can't see what she's doing right now, but she's got the sugar snap peas. And I'll right move that. Right and here. this is just back on the corner of the board. And you should have to go in this corner to Okay. Okay. These go right. Am here. I got a good angle? No. Okay. But you're you're working hard, sister. <laughs> see back there. We're really bad at this. I apologize. Okay. So the sugar snap peas are going on either corner. They kind of the look board. just like this one's going to look, but it's just back in the other corner. Just kind, kind of, of a, just kind just of a little, little mound. Over a little bit. Yeah. And we put the, some grapes on there. Okay. okay. So over a little bit toward that sausage. Again, you cannot mess it up. No. As long as a lot of love is going in it, you can't mess it up. Okay. And then we had right here, we just had a little stack of, of uh, cucumbers. Um, just kind of going every which way. There was no really. Um, we stacked reason. those. Kind yeah. Of. Yeah. We just kind of stacked them up. You don't uh, have to use them all. Yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I think I don't think I need quite all of it of what we had. So that adds some cucumber there. And then okay, we, this is fun. A, a person that's watching suggested on the cucumber also that you can take the um, tines of a fork and drag it down the, the sides of the cucumber before you cut it and then cut it. And that makes a nice little- Oh, that is cute. So, yeah, that's cute. That's awesome. Great, that's great, awesome. great suggestion. That is a great suggestion. Okay, then we know, let's put our carrots next. And uh, we, y'all, we did two different kinds of carrots. We did some in a package that were already uh, done. And we put those- We put them under the- Underneath. Under, 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 where did we put them? Well, we put them kind of this right prosciutto is kind of a big pile. But yeah, okay. We'll just move this just prosciutto over a little bit. bit. And we put 
just some some plain carrots down on the bottom of the board. Already cut, super Already easy. Cut, out of the package. And then I'm going to take two of these with the uh, leaves still on them, and I'm just going to lay them across. You can move that little thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just laying them across, and then their their leaves just go out the back. So that's another texture. And it yeah. makes it look really fresh. And they also have those carrots at the store that are all different colors, like those purple, mm -hmm. yellow, orange, and those are look neat on a board like this mm -hmm. too, just because it adds color. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, now we need blackberries. Can we do blackberries? Yeah, let's do the blackberries now. Okay, blackberries are gonna go right in front of the brie beside the, um, right here at the front and just kind of pile them up by the brie. And, and then we had some in back of the brie too. Okay. Amy? We did? Oh, behind the yeah, cucumbers. Right, yeah, behind behind the cucumbers. Cucumber. Okay, so now you're going in between the cucumbers and the cheese, your cheese cubes. Cubes. Kind of on either side of the brie, just because that dark against the white looks pretty. And to me, blackberries are like one of your secret weapons. They like just all of a sudden make it look really rich and, and beautiful, so. And then we've got these, these neat, um, here. Got apricots, dried apricots that we're going to put right down here. I got them. Okay, dried apricots, or you could use any kind of dried fruit. Yeah, whatever fruit you've got if you it don't care about apricots. We like the color of apricots, so we went with those. But. And you can just mound them or make them in a row, however you want to do it. Okay, okay. and then that little cheese right there. A question while they're doing that is, do you usually label your cheeses or meats, especially if spicy? Definitely a thing you could do. We chose not to do that this time because we didn't know what kinds of cheese, we, we didn't have, we weren't all buying the same exact kind of cheeses. So we just, but there's the cutest things you can find really anywhere online that have little, have labels, especially for allergies or things like that. Um, also kind of on those same lines, um, I saw one the other day that if you have, you know, sometimes you don't aren't sure of allergies or things in your crowd. Hey, hang on one second. If you're out of something to do, cut your grapes into little bunches. Okay, go ahead. That's Sorry. Good. Yeah, Just multitasking. Um, so as far as allergies go, in a little bit, we're going to fill in with nuts. But I saw one the other day. Of course, we have to be super sensitive to allergies. So you can put it on parts of your board where it's separated from everything else and you might put some greenery in between it um so that or or off of the board in a in a bowl or whatever if you're for your family and you know allergies you don't have to worry about that but of course if you're doing it for a party and you're not sure because obviously better to be safe than sorry okay and y'all now we're going to do some more fruits and and we're going to just kind of fill in some spots that look like they need a little bit of color with some, we've got red and um, and green, green grapes. grapes. Whatever color you have works. It doesn't matter. We just kind of stacked up some of those. So we did that right here on the edge of the where the peppers are, and in between the olives and the peppers on the edge of the board. Yeah, and then right over here by this little um, uh, hot pepper, hot cheese. We have some more grapes, and then we're gonna add some strawberries there. That adds kind of a, just another little layer on there um to make it look pretty and okay you also have strawberries back there on the back of the board okay uh, okay while well, she's doing behind that, the cheese somebody asked do you usually do crackers and breads and the answer <laughs> is yes but us three ding dongs forgot to include that on the shopping list so yes of course we use crackers or breads and we have those on some other boards that are already made that we're going to show you in a little bit some fun ways that you can stack those or put those on your board. So this one is just literally meats, veggies, uh, fruits, and um, cheeses. But normally we would definitely add some crackers to this. So, so with, for this though, we had a single she would just have a little basket of crackers yeah. and breads or things to, to put with it. To dip or whatever. So. Right. Okay, now we're almost through. Y'all can you believe that? Yeah. You've done right. good, you've but. done really good. I need cheese back here too because you've got this dip and you've got this this grapes. other cheese. I mean grapes. Thank oh you. yeah, grapes. Okay. Oh yeah, we have to put some grapes there. Grapes. Uh -huh. But then for fillers, we're gonna go with the nuts. And we know what we just said about the allergies. But uh, the nuts make it give it some depth. And any place you have a little hole, just push a handful of nuts. And uh, like right here, we got a little hole. So we're gonna put some nuts in there. Okay. So really, you're just filling in any hole with. Yes. with some nuts 
and you could use anything. You could use popcorn, you could use um, cranberries, you can use really in, anything that's little and will fit that bill. Okay. Time for more prizes. Time for more prizes. Okay. Let's see. Let's do a let's do the two spoons. It's these two little cute little wooden spoons. These are going to go to Sarah Smiley and Deetra McCarver. Hope I'm saying your name right. Deetra McCarver. Thank y'all. So two spoons coming to y'all. All right, y'all, we're almost through. How are y'all doing? We have y'all are doing well filling in with these nuts and do we have any other questions? The only other question we had was, is that fig jam? And yes, it's fig jam. But you can use any kind of little sweet, sweet or spicy, um, or sweet and spicy little jam right there. And um, this one didn't do, I like to use, my husband likes everything hot. So I like yes. to use uh, any kind of raspberry chipotle mm -hmm. jam or something like that. Mm -hmm. That's what I usually use. And yeah. you know, again, like we said, there's not a right and wrong. Everything's right. And uh, <laughs> that's right. As long so as, well as long as you like it, it's good. So, okay, y'all, I think we're about through. And I think you can see, and can you show them again? Oh, okay. Uh, again, somebody asked, and they just said, you didn't answer my question. So <laughs> I, I'm gonna I get through this again. How many people will this board be? I read somewhere that you allow should allow two ounces of cheese per person and two ounces of meat per person. If but I think that's yeah. more if it's you know more of a meal. Um, but as far as snacking or appetizers, um, as many as it, of these as we've made. I mean, I like I said, yeah, I would say this is going to feed. 12 to 15 people for sure. But maybe keep in mind the two to four ounces um, of meats and cheeses per person, so. Okay, so here's our finished product. I'm trying to get over it, but I can't really tell what I'm videoing. Oh, that's perfect, so. sister. Good. good job, good job. Good job. Okay, so we have that one and we have this one. Who's coming over? Now we know this is taking a little bit of time to put this together and uh, you can keep working if you're not finished with yours, if you want to keep working. But uh, the next little while, we are going to show you some different kinds of boards. And the first one, we're going to go to Allie back in Dallas. And, you know, we told you Allie's a working girl and she worked all day today <laughs> and came home and put together a fast working girls board. So if you decide you're going to have company and uh, you need to get it done fast. Allie's going to show you how and what the board will look like. So take it away, Allie. Yay, Allie girl. Okay, so I real life got home today at like 520 and then started at six o'clock. So I did all of this within about 30-ish minutes uh, with my roommate. She would like a shout out. Um, but okay, so we did three different boards. She's going to show it and then I'll kind of go through them all because go a little bit lower. Exactly. Okay, so this one right here, it's a little bit of a smaller board. I'd probably say like maybe like a foot long. This one is the dip I made. We drizzled a little bit of the hot honey on the top. Um, and then we actually saw a trend a couple of days ago <laughs> um, that people are doing like with charcuterie boards where they're putting like salami around a rim of like a wine glass or something. And then you basically like just like keep holding it over. And then when you take it out, the bottom basically makes like a rose. So it looks beautiful. So we added that to this one, um, cubed up. We actually bought this cheese already cubed, um, got some grapes, some cashews, crackers, some little breadsticks. And then this one is a little bit more, um, I guess like complex in a sense. Um, so this one has cashews again, some pimento cheese, cubed cheese again, some fruit, um, bell peppers. I like the ones that are like come already like this, um, just because you can like dip into something and then use it. Um, so you can dip in the pimento cheese, the hot honey, the, this is a fig jam. So it's super good. Uh, there's nuts and stuff on here. Some olives, prosciutto, salami. I like any type of like different cheese. So this one's like going to be a pepper jack. That's the one that we bought cubed. Um, this one's a different like cheddar. 
This one's going to be a blueberry goat cheese. It's super good goat. Like, <laughs> you got it. You got it. You got it. <laughs> um, this is a blueberry goat cheese. So it's super good and super soft. Um, and then we typically will kind of do like a, I don't know, like an even thing of like cheese, meat, and crackers. Um, or like I said, peppers or nuts or anything like that. Um, and fruit is always a good one too, just because you can like brighten it up a little bit. And then I know someone had a question earlier. This one's kind of the same as this, just a little bit smaller. Um, but someone had a question earlier about like how you trans or not transport it, but like how you get something off the board to your plate. So I have a bunch of these different, um, little <laughs> um, I have a bunch of these different, like, I guess spreaders and this one's kind of more like tongs, but um, we also kind of, these are technically little like drink stirrers, but we, I sometimes use them as like, kind of like toothpicks. Um, so you could use toothpicks too, just to put it on your plate or take it to your mouth, um, anything like that. But I know earlier they were talking about like just kind of mounding food. So that's kind of what we did with like the cube cheese and like the fruit, just kind of mound it. That way all, all can kind of stay together. Um, and then I know someone had a question earlier about like board sizes. So I know the first one I talked about was like I said, like, I guess like a foot ish <laughs> by like five. I don't know how you describe it. <laughs> and then this one is a little bit of a bigger board. So it's like my whole arm length. And then this one right here is a square. So I'd probably say like eight by eight, maybe, or 10 by 10. And then I have a bunch of different ones um, just for different occasions. Like this one's a little bit skinnier, but it's longer. Um, this one is kind of the same, just a little bit smaller. And then there's all these festive ones. Like I have a Christmas tree. <laughs> I know it's not Christmas, but it's a good thing to use for Christmas. Always Christmas in our heart. But um, I would say the, the best thing to do for, we can put it back here. <laughs> the best thing to do for like trying to rush um while you're trying to make these I would say definitely the best thing to do is like buy the peppers that are already you know like this you don't have to chop anything like that um and then I always buy nuts too that I can just pour out on here and I know someone asked a question earlier about allergies so I typically will keep like the nuts in like a separate bowl just in case um someone is allergic but my friends actually are coming over in like 30 minutes after this because they knew that I was making all these. <laughs> um, I know that like none of them are allergic, so I'm okay to put them on the board. But I know cube cheese is always a super easy one just because then you don't have to sit there and slice forever. Um, of course, crackers are super easy, fruit's super easy. Um, and then we, I did use olives too. I know they did that earlier. And then as far as meat goes, um, we didn't just kind of fold it super simple. It wasn't anything crazy, but I think we only really use like our knives for like two different cheeses. So I really think all in all, we spent about 15 minutes probably mm -hmm. on all these, which granted there were two of us, but still, I don't think it would have taken too long, um, but super fun. And then I know someone asked earlier, like how good the dip is good for. I think I would go based off of which I don't really know about expiration dates, <laughs> but I would probably go off of like however good mayonnaise and mustard and lemon juice would be good together. Yeah, like how my roommate says, how long a potato salad is good for. <laughs> so maybe like a week, I don't know. That's how, what I would think. But I mean, it's super easy and super fun, but that's all I've got for this event. Thank you, Allie. You were, you were fast. Good and job, Allie. Your dogs look great. Okay, a couple of little questions. Um, somebody asked, what food items are good for edible containers that add to the organic look? Um, I think we know what you're talking about. Um, you can take like a half of a pineapple. You can scoop out, out the, um, the meat of the pineapple, the fruit of the pineapple, and use that and put other fruits inside that, blackberries, strawberries, grapes, whatever. Um, you can also do peppers, like just chop the top of a, of a red or green or yellow pepper off and scoop out the inside and then add things, either a dip, uh, 
in fact, we talked about doing that today, but we were out of peppers. We'd already cut all of our peppers. So avocado, avocado, like great. the great avocado. We could also make a cucumber boat. You know, you could scoop oh, out that, scoop out the, the goodie of a cucumber and put some things in there. You know, I think anything that has some space inside or something that you can scoop out would work for yeah, that. Yeah, and I know that when I've seen some really big ones, they've used uh, lettuce leaf. Is that bib lettuce? That yeah, lettuce real, is really pretty. Any kind of pretty lettuce you can put down to and, and Okay, somebody said, do you put a knife with each cheese that needs to be cut? Definitely. Uh -huh. um, and then apricot, apricot jam works well too. D that's a great idea. And then somebody said, do you supply forks? And yes, this is the kind of thing, you know, it's becoming, it's it's kind of the thing to, to, to stand, stand around an island and, and everybody just kind of eat off of it. But that's that's totally up to you. It may be something where this is just part of your party or part of your get together. So you might want to have little appetizer plates and a, a mason jar or a jar that has forks in it. Um, totally. In the age that we're in right now with COVID and cold and flu season, right. I would definitely do little, I mean, right now you could do Valentine plates and you know, then it's like they serve themselves off of that and instead of just standing around. Standing around and grazing. And well, eating it. and what we've done tonight, Breathing we've on. done pretty much all casual because charcuterie really lends itself to that. But you know what? This would be beautiful on a silver tray. Oh, if absolutely. If you entertain in a little different way and you want to put yours on a silver tray, it looks wonderful. I've actually done that myself absolutely. with charcuterie boards. And uh, so it, it looks pretty on any kind of container. Since we're all somehow related to Baylor. We did a couple of boards that use all Baylor colors. So we're gonna show you those now and talk to you a little bit about those. We first thought we might change out some of these and then we thought, oh, maybe we'll just make different ones and talk about what we used on those. And you can see, you can use anything in the right colors. So let's see, sister. Yeah, this, let's get You're closer. Okay, yeah, let's do real yeah, close. Let's do real close. Okay, I think that's pretty good yeah, that's right there. Close. Okay, so we've, yeah. we've got crackers on this one. Some of the crackers we've got just flat. They're just stacked up like that. And we chose crackers that were real textury. Um, so they've got this have sesame seeds on them, but they're just stacked up right there. Then the same kind of cracker, these are on their side. So that kind of looks like an accordion. Those are some long ones. Then we've got some round ones in here. I think these had chives in them. We really did try to choose some that had uh, Baylor, some green and gold in them. Um, and then we've got those same ones right here. So we kind of stacked them on their side here and then fanned them out here. We there's, remembered the, cr there's the crackers. There's cheese that has the rind completely on it. Oh yes, okay, let me see if I can pick this oh, up y'all. Okay, so this still, we just kept the rind on that. And that's Jarlsberg cheese and that's Jarlsberg really cheese. easy to, Mm-hmm. Fine. So, so other go. things on the board, cucumbers, kiwi, and the kiwi stacked inside yellow bell peppers that we cut in a circle. Uh, those are some kind of, what are those, jalapenos? Uh, shout out to Virginia Ellison. We've got some crybabies right there, jalapenos. We love you, Jin Jin. Oh my goodness. <laughs> then here are some pretzel rods. I just took a mason jar and put a put Baylor colored ribbon around it. In the back, add some tell what's behind that. Uh, back here are squash that we just, um, squash that is not cooked. It's just um, raw squash that we've taken and kind of thick julienne to, um, and then behind that are some green, some Granny Smith apples and we put them so that the green part shows. Just kind of fanned out like that. Then the, uh, there's asparagus wrapped with ham or prosciutto, and we just put that up there where the green shows. So that shows. you can see the green. And somebody asked earlier if you steam your asparagus or, or cook yes. it first, and the answer is no. We just left it completely raw, and it's yummy and crispy. Really, but I, really good. But and, I, and we're going to send you a, a little follow-up um, uh, sheet, and it's going to have a recipe for that on it. You put some little cream cheese down on the ham, and... Uh, and seasoned and then you roll it up in the asparagus. But I also, I also think the asparagus is your choice. I, I choose to blanch my asparagus, which just, uh, it just makes it a little bit easier if you don't like raw asparagus. So it's your choice really. And then this is a um, jalapeno pimento cheese that we bought. You can certainly make your own, but uh, your local grocery stores will either have plain jalapeno cheese, fresh jalapeno cheese or jalapeno. 
we thought that was super fun and um, Baylor-y. And we did not do it today on anything, but this cheese is extremely stiff. It's a, it's a stiff um, concoction of cheese and you can fix it in a ball and roll it in pecans. And it looks really pretty on a board as the well. The jalapeno, yeah, the cheese. cheese. You can roll the pecans and put it on a board. It looks really pretty. Oh there's, my, there's just okay. Little variation. That is, and then that, that your local grocery store also has the regular, if you don't like jalapeno, Spicy. pimento cheese. Then just because it was Baylor, we, we took some parsley and we just added parsley in four spots just to kind of add some more color, next, especially next to the crackers so that it just kind of popped out. And, and we have our little batter bears. We had to. Yeah, I hope our little batter bears. Okay, onto this board. Onto this one. Okay, let's point out this right here. Um, this has a green rind. Oh, good job, sister. Am this I? has okay. a green rind back here. The cheese had a green rind. And then this is the cheese that was in it. So it's we, like pepper jack cheese. Pepper jack cheese. We cut all the cheese out of the rind. And then we just uh, cubed it and put it back inside. And the rind makes a good little uh, base. Kind of like a boat. Right. Mm -hmm. There's more squash and apples, carrots. I mean, uh, crackers. And then we found we got little we got little Teddy Grahams. So we had te we have little Teddy Grahams on there, a little sweet to add to the savory and, and add bears. to the, and to <laughs> add to the bear theme. Uh, more asparagus. This time we did it like this to where you could see the um, the stalk. So that's just another variation of a way to do it. That. Is a go, oh, in the middle, go ahead. In the middle, then we, this, I don't know that you can see this, but there are, again, what like what we did on our board where we Maybe stacked we'll the circles here. of um, bell peppers. These are green bell peppers. I think we have three or four. And then we put the different color tomatoes, the light green and the gold tomatoes. Yeah, those aren't grapes. Up. Those are, yeah, those are tomatoes. tomatoes. Green and yellow tomatoes are in there. Um, here is a goat cheese that's an herbed goat cheese with a, a green herb on it. So that's a soft cheese on there. So we would definitely need a knife to go with that. And and you could have, we could have sliced that, but we just didn't just because. We, we had a lot to do today, friends. <laughs> we did. <laughs> we had a lot to do. <laughs> then this one is an apricot. It's a little bit harder cheese. So you'd need a knife for that one too as well. But it would be good with some ginger snaps if you wanted to step some of that on it because it's kind of sweet. Ooh, good idea, mama. Then these are little the little midget sweet pickles, and we put this on a little gold. You can't my see. Um, this is the sweetest little. This is our grandmother's um, little gold bowl. Oh, depression, depression glass. glass. Mm -hmm. Depression glass. Depression glass. So shout out like, to doll. That's right. And charcuterie boards are so fun for that. You can use. You know, it's a great time to pull out some little sweet antique dishes, or look for them when you're antique shopping, and um, put some little treasures on there as well to make, put a personal touch. And the crackers on here, we have some chive crackers and then also some olive um, baguette or bagel crisp. Bagel crisp. They have a little bit of olive in them. And Just then there's some celery under here. Anything too. green and gold. That's what Anything we're Anything green and gold. And that's kind of, that's what's fun about it is now you'll start going to the store and you'll say, oh, that'd be cute for a Baylor, a Baylor board. So um, let's do, some, let's do a couple more prizes. I think it's time for prizes. And maybe we have a question or two and then prizes. we'll move on to the Yes. Okay. Prices. Okay. I ended there. Drum roll, drum roll, drum roll. Okay. We have when y'all are going to win um, two of the honey dippers. So this goes to Wendy Yarborough and Lou Beth Birdwell. So Wendy Yarborough, Lou Beth Birdwell, congratulations. Now we're going to take you into the kitchen. We have some things to show you in the kitchen. Well, we used for decorations some little pomegranates because they're pretty. And then we did apples. We did some little uh, heart shape, uh, some little cheeses. We took those little little bitty uh, baby cheese, bells, baby baby bell bells. cheeses and cut little hearts out of those. It's got some cheese, uh, I mean some 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 of our meats we have in the various places. This is a white cheddar, and uh, this is a cranberry cheese. Got some little cranberries on top, and this is a kind of special little pepper that um, is pretty pepperazzi. and red. It's called pepperazzi. And you can stuff that with uh, cream cheese if you want. And it looks pretty. And I we got just, that. I got this in like the olive counter or your prepared foods at the grocery store. There, It, came, I, it was one of those things like they weigh it. You put in an, a certain amount and they weigh it. But my mom also found some that were in a jar that are stuffed with cream cheese. These are very, very sturdy. And so you could stuff that your, your own with cream cheese or you could buy it already stuffed. We used these because they were fresh and we wanted to use those. And we thought 
you know, they, they look, looked fresh. And so we like that. Then this is some cranberry uh, goat cheese. That same goat right cheese here. that we've used that on we've the used other before. boards. And then here are our um, little uh, rings of the um, red pepper. <laughs> Sister, tell me about these. Oh, well, those, those little things right there point to uh, right those here. little cracker things are Takis. So if you're, that just adds a little spice. And if y'all don't know what a talkie is, then ask your college student or <laughs> your nearest college student. They they're, know what that they is. Give, they're they give really a, good. You probably got some, at, but they give them away outside Baylor games. So oh, really? Got okay. Some. And then these are honey roasted cashews around this particular cheese. And I don't know if she was muted, but on the edges are pomegranates just cut in half and no one would eat those. They're just for decoration with the baby We just think the seeds are pretty. Heart. So that's our Valentine's savory. Um, oh, let me tell them really quick. Okay, okay. so on the Valentine, it, it all looks red and white right now, but let me just show you how you could quickly uh, turn this into like a uh, July 4th. So am I gonna tell me? Uh -huh, so like you that. could just put out some July 4th napkins. You could put out, these are just straws and flags. And then I've got some blueberries and you could just sprinkle blueberries, blackberries, whatever on it. Uh, then all of a sudden it doesn't look like Valentine's anymore. It looks more like July 4th. And then you could, obviously you would take the, the heart crackers off and just put regular crackers, but just see how easy and versatile you can make it be for something else. So use the same kind of things, but then all of a sudden, we're ready for independence. Y'all check your phones and make sure everybody okay. can hear us. And here's for the good part. That we're, here, here are the sweets. So um, this is a, a board that Amy had, and uh, it's kind of a rustic board, and we can could use it with. She stacked has stacked it up with big vegetables, but we decided to put our sweets on it today. And uh, yes. it it has uh, everything from these are little tiny. Um, well, and just, just so you know, this board is not anything to do with food. It, it was just like at a home oh, store goodness. and it, it was not meant, but I just needed something huge. And so that's what, uh, that's what I used for that. Okay. Let's start at this end. Yeah. You, let's start over no, here. You go ahead. Okay. You go I'm, ahead. I'm you're concentrating. Whole, no. oh, you're concentrating. Okay. Okay. These are just some little, little decorated pretzels that I found at the grocery store, actually. Oh, wait, hang on one second. Nothing on this board did we make. No, nothing so is Everything made. is st store bought, but it hey, all looks hey now, cute. Hey now, I made those right there. Oh, that's oh right. Well, okay, did. just kidding. Okay, um, and actually these cookies are, are homemade <laughs> by a cute little Baylor graduate that um, I love to, uh, to support, and she supports a lot of our Baylor events, sure, but she does slides. beautiful iced cookies. So if you need any, let me know and I'll let you know how to contact her. Um, we did some strawberries, Sherry. Uh, I put a little, there's some icing on some strawberries today. These are some little chocolate sticks. Those are called uh, dark chocolate cookie sticks. And they come in a little container at one of my favorite grocery stores in Austin. And this is a little candied apple. There's a girl in Tyler that does beautiful candied apples. And, and um, she ships. Yeah, and she ships. And Sherry had one, and it fit our colors, and so we thought it made a nice addition. Here. Well, and it's such Y'all a knew. great it's such a great way to use small local businesses and support small businesses that are trying to you know help their family or um, be able to stay at home with their kids or whatever. These cookies, the apples. Um, so just to, oh, this one. This was from a small business as well too. So. Yeah, this was from a small business. That's just a little chocolate to go with your raspberry. Who knew that they made chocolate hummus? This yes. is that's chocolate what mint, mint hummus, and it's actually made with chickpeas. Did y'all know? I mean, that yeah. was crazy to me. And, and it's actually tastes very good. This has some chocolate almonds, and then some more of the little raspberry cookies, and some more of these pretzels, and then we just kind of filled in with some um, some actual mousse mix. This is what this is, popcorn with some chocolate in it. We have some little uh, chocolate toffee right here, a cup of chocolate, dark chocolate toffee. And then we put some of our favorite Valentine candies. You can see they're just kind of sprinkled out through in, throughout. So I think uh, we have enough. This one would probably serve 20 people <laughs> for oh, dessert. For sure, and everybody it's, would be sick after, but it would be fun. Yeah. yeah. One of the things we talked about uh, today when we were doing this Back is- off Amy a little bit so they can just see the okay. whole thing. It, when we were doing this is it would be fun if you're, if it's a nighttime party to do um, some little 
votives in your yeah, in your board. We didn't have room because we filled it up, but um, along with the little flowers and and you can find any kind of white or red. Uh, we I think on the hummus and the raspberries are on a saucer under there. So use whatever you have for containers. It, it doesn't have to be a certain container. It could be a cup. It could be a teacup. It could be a teeny mixing bowl, whatever. And we have one more thing we want to show you and then we'll answer some questions before our time is up. So come this way and before one, one tip that we love uh, this summer, my four Mom. best Baylor friends, uh, we get together every summer and so when see. we were planning our trip, we said, Hey, what would be fun? We're all so into charcuterie boards, but we all use different things. And so we said, Hey, what if every, if all of us bought, brought, our three or four favorite things that we love to put on a charcuterie board. We did not tell each other what we were bringing. We didn't compare. We didn't care if it was the same. We just showed up and then we got out a board and we just laid everything out. And then it was a great way for us to learn about new things that we could put on ours or just to share what we had as well. And it just worked out perfectly. We had cheeses, meats, veggies, honey. So that's kind of fun too. And it'll cut down on the cost. If you want to do a girls night at your house, Say, hey, bring over your three or four favorite things and let's just put it all together. It's fun. And then you get to create it together and then enjoy it together. So, and I think that'd even be fun to do with your family, even if you have college kids or young adults, and just say, bring three things for the charcuterie board. Now, you may end up with some, uh, Cheetos. yeah, Cheetos or cheese puffs like Brooke did, but you know, it, 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 that makes it, fun. it does make it fun or talkies, you know, it makes it. And fun. What we, did is we just put a piece of brown paper on the kitchen table and um, we added a few things. But quite honestly, what we did with this board was we took everything we had left over and we just kind of put on. it on this board and added some radishes and a few things to give it a little bit of color. And uh, it is so it's a lot of the same things that were on the other bo various other boards. This so, is a fun trend, though, just to put. Put the craft, the brown craft paper on your island and cover it up or a part of your kitchen and table where on a part of a countertop, whatever, and just throw it out there. So um, another thing, this is a great way to use some height, different heights. Um, this is just a little cake stand and we put things underneath it and things on top of it. Um, this is just a little, a little cheese, cheese slicer knife. that a friend of mine made for me and I wanted to use it. And so, uh, but any kind of little knives that you have you know work great and i know we're about out of time but uh, do we have some more questions sherry do we have some more let's do let's do the, the last two the last two prizes these are um the last two honey dippers but y'all thank you so much for joining this on this <laughs> this was really fun so here's Wait, the last we would say that we are not professionals we are not professionals we have really have no clue what we're doing but <laughs> okay so here last drum roll the ninth one goes to renee cartwright and number 10 goes to Gloria Dubos. So oh, congratulations. Gosh. All right, Shannon, do we have some questions? Yes, we do. Oh, good. And, well, I'm so, I'm so full. I'm just sitting here making my board and no one's oh, But so I'm just sitting here snacking out the whole time and I'm just like loaded. But this is so fun, girls. Everybody's commenting, y'all great comments. But here's a few questions that came up that we still I um, might want to talk about real quick. Um, do you make the board with the intention? And if you answer this, I'm sorry, I've been writing and doing. Do you make the board with the intention of refilling it during the party or do you make it big enough to serve everyone in one pass? Well, that's another one of those choice things. Mm -hmm. uh, if you think you're going to have time to, uh, to fill it up and you're using it as a meal uh, for over a long period of time, you might want to be prepared to fill it up again. If you're using it just for an appetizer board, probably one time is enough. Would right. you all say? Well, Somebody. that board that I had, the big one that we did the Valentine sweets in, that I, I did that one and then two other huge boards for um, a, a graduation party uh, two years ago. And so we did that one and we did replenish it because there were like a hundred people at the party and that was the healthy stuff that went with the yucky, I mean, the bad for you food. So we did replenish those, but we really didn't have to replenish it much. So I, I feel like it kind of just depends on what, what you're having. And if you're serving it over a long period of time, you could do like we did tonight, two matching boards 
and you could trade one out for the other so it's full and then you could adjust the first one so if the second one gets depleted you have you can and go back with thinks, i think it's okay if it gets depleted it doesn't have to look perfect at the the way that it does at the beginning at the end i think it's okay for it to look depleted because that means everybody loved it that's right yeah. everybody loved it and if you cram it all together then when they take some it still looks full okay so, Great. Um, can you give an approximate cost of maybe making a board like the one you made earlier, the first board? What's an approximate cost of something like that? I mean, I'm sure it can vary. Well, it can, depending on what you get. I'd say $50 probably on, uh, on it's that the cheeses. The, the cheeses. cheeses are expensive. And that's why I would say if you can go and to that's... a little discount specialty store of some kind, um, I, uh, I bought a lot of these cheeses at a little, at a discount, discounted store because- Like a big, you're talking yeah. about one of the big discount stores. Yeah. There are, there are some places that have like different kind of cheeses packaged together. Um, at some well, of and, and some of these, stores. I bought a little smaller place that has some specialty <laughs> items. And then, you know, our regular grocery store has beautiful things, but they are a little bit more expensive than some of the little specialty out of the way places that you can go and buy cheeses. So the cheeses are what really add up more than even the meats. Okay. Um, okay, so um, that's mainly it for the questions. I've had lots of comments and some very sweet comments. Um, very, oh. everybody is super excited. Some, someone said, worth the cost of admission just to hear you girls talking. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm guessing you're not from Texas. Yes. Yeah. That was so sweet. That is so sweet. Interacting with each other. Yes. Um, let me read this to you real quick. Mary Ann, Sherry, and Amy, I have to say hi. My maiden name is Grimes. I don't know her first name. Y'all were our next door neighbors on Shag Rock. Oh, our, my God. Uh, <laughs> in this year as a sophomore. Great to see you all in great class. Oh, so, 